Okay, uh, we are going to move on now to the uh, data saving feature on the VetSpecs PM100. Um, I, I, again, got to say in my personal opinion, VetSpecs uh, has, has stayed consistent with uh, their efforts here in trying to uh, make a surgical monitor that is as friendly and easy to use as possible. Uh, without losing uh, any of the vital information that you might need. Uh, again, just simplifying it, and that uh, has carried over from not just the ease of use on the monitor with the buttons and how you're hooking things up to the patient, but it also carries on over to the uh, data saving aspects as well. Um, most surgical monitors that are on the market uh, will have a thermal strip printer and so you just simply hit a print button and you'd get an immediate printout right then and there. Uh, the one issue with these thermal printouts is that the data is usually very small. Uh, it is on thermal paper uh, and if you want to keep those documents for long term or want to uh, share them with uh, maybe a cardiologist if you're running an ECG, you have to then take that thermal print, that ticker taped strip, uh, and scan it. And so what VetSpecs has done is they have completely circumvented the whole thermal printout design and they've gone directly to a USB flash drive uh, saving. So with the PM100 system you're going to receive uh, a, a simple uh, VetSpecs flash drive, USB flash drive, and you'll also receive a data viewing uh, software CD. This is going to be important for you to have, you'll load this on your computer so that it allows your computer, your PC, uh, uh, Windows based PC system to be able to view the saved files created by the surgical monitor. Uh, you'll need this uh, software to view those files. I'll talk a little bit more about the data or the uh, software on the computer in just a bit. But moving on, uh, what VetSpecs uh, has done is designed essentially what is a digital print right to the flash drive. So what would have historically been a printout on pa uh, paper, plain paper or a thermal paper, it's basically printing data automatically for you to your flash drive. Uh, one thing that I want to also note is I've worked with the system. Uh, it is important to make sure that the date and time, uh, you may not be able to make this out in this uh, video. Um, the uh, lower right corner, the numbers are going to be a little bit small and you may not be able to see it, but you do want to make sure that the date and time are correct. Uh, that is going to be uh, important for the way the files are created. Uh, also too, at the bottom of the screen, uh, you'll want to notice that it does say USB none. That is indicating, of course, that a USB flash drive is not plugged in. Uh, Assuming that you have everything hooked up to a patient, what you're seeing now in demonstration mode, uh, it, again, it's a full-blown demo. This is the way that the screen would look, assuming everything that you have available for the PM100 is, in fact, attached to a patient. So your ECG uh, with heart rate, temperature, pulse ox, non-invasive blood pressure, end tidal CO2, and respiration. All of that data, what is happening with the VetSpecs PM100 is all of the data is being saved as we speak to the internal memory of the monitor. Uh, so in essence, you have an internal temporary memory. Your USB flash drive will essentially be a backup to that internal memory. And again, this will all come together as I explain this. So by the push of a button, even in surgery, you're able to push the trend button. And this is going to show you a summarized charting of the streaming data, your heart rate, temperature, respiration, end tidal CO2 is on a single chart for you within the internal memory. This is accessible again by pushing the trend button. This allows the doctor or the technician to quickly view what the trend has been throughout the duration of the procedure. And this trend chart will continue uh, indefinitely for as long as the procedure uh, goes on. Uh, again, this is internal uh, within the monitor memory itself. It is temporary in the sense that if you power the monitor off, this trend is cleared and that's where the flash, uh, flash drive with the backup battery is important or not backup battery, uh, backup memory. The next uh, internal charting or trending is going to be the blood pressure chart. 
So this is essentially uh, a charting of all the blood pressures, the time they were taken, systolic, diastolic, and mean uh, and pulse rate, all within a single chart. Uh, and again, this monitor is automatically creating this data within its internal memory. And uh, when you plug your flash drive in, uh, it will begin digitally printing that data to your flash drive. I'm going to go ahead and take the flash drive now, plug it in, and what is going to happen, I had referenced earlier the time and date, the VetSpecs monitor is going to now see that the flash drive is connected, it's going to go from USB none to USB ready, and then within just a second or so, the VetSpecs PM100 is going to look at that flash drive, and it's going to do one of two things, it's going to either create a folder simply named VetSpecs, or it's going to look for a folder already named VetSpecs had you had a folder already been created. It's going to populate and put information in that same folder. And that's simply because you may be using a flash drive that you have other data saved as well on the flash drive. So again, in short, the PM100 will create a folder named VetSpecs if one does not exist on the flash drive, or it will acknowledge that one does exist and begin creating a file for the for the current surgery surgical procedure or screening or whatever you may be doing on a patient again probably is not uh, something that you can see in this video but once the folder has been created uh, the vet specs folder the monitor then creates a simple file it's just a single file and that file is created based upon the four parameters of the last two digits of the year month, day, and hour. So one file within the folder. Again, one folder named VetSpecs, one file for the existing procedure that you're on. Uh, the PM100 system at that point is constantly accessing that file that's been created, that was created, and what it is now going to do is every six seconds, uh, very, very nice that it does this, every six seconds it is going to create a backup copy of the line graph trend and the blood pressure chart and it is going to go to the flash drive and overwrite the previous digital printed image. So in short, at the end of a surgical procedure, within the VetSpec folder will be one surgical file and within that file, once you view it on your computer, will be one trend chart and one blood pressure chart that would have been updated, of course, possibly hundreds if not thousands of times uh, throughout, big, depending upon the duration of the procedure itself. So it keeps it simple for the, the practitioner or the technician. One BP chart, one trend chart that will exist for, for however long the surgical procedure may have, exist, uh, may have lasted. The other thing that the VetSpecs PM100 is doing for a completely comprehensive uh, uh, file, the PM100 is also saving in those six second intervals, it is saving a snapshot of the wave uh, waveforms and the numerical values that were occurring every six seconds. So in essence, you have what is essentially a video that is broken down into six second snapshots that is also saved within that file. And again, that is very, very helpful for, uh, for a veterinarian or a veterinary practice to know that they have an entire recording of a surgical procedure uh, if they should need to, uh, you know, review that information uh, uh, after the surgical procedure is done. Um, now, with that being said, what we recommend is at the end of the surgical procedure, let's just assume that we were in a, a one-hour surgery, uh, what you would want to do is go ahead and do one of two things. You'll either power the monitor off, uh, basically discontinuing any communication to the flash drive, or you can go to the menu button. There is a way to go into the menu button. I'm not going to do it because again, you probably won't be able to see it, but by hitting menu, you can scroll down and turn the USB flash drive uh, or the USB port off. So do one of those two things. What I'm essentially trying to say is you don't want to unplug the flash drive while it's physically communicating with the monitor. Uh, one other thing that just crossed my mind, I was talking about six second intervals. Uh, down at the bottom of the screen, you may be able to make this out, but you'll see that that file number is flashing every six seconds. That is helpful for, again, the user of the monitor to see that that flashing is occurring. 
uh, that uh, verifies for you as a user that the data is in fact saving. So do look for that, look for the file number, look for the flashing every six seconds, uh, and that is going to give you peace of mind that the monitor is saving the data uh, as it's supposed to. Now, with all of that being said, um, again, very simple. Turn the monitor on, hook your patient up, plug your flash drive in, uh, just allow the monitor to do its thing. At the end of surgery, power the unit off, remove your flash drive. What we highly recommend after working with the viewing software, again, very simple. Uh, the interface on your computer uh, is not complicated at all, uh, easy to work with. But what we do recommend is when you remove the flash drive, take it to your computer, plug it into your flash drive, uh, plug it into your computer USB port. We recommend taking the VetSpecs folder that is on the flash drive, copying that entire folder, not the file, just the file within the folder, but copy the entire VetSpecs folder create maybe a master folder on your desktop or network, copy the folder again from the flash drive that's named VetSpecs, place it within a master folder on your computer system, and then rename the VetSpecs folder something specific to the surgical procedure or the patient uh, that you uh, had uh, just worked on, maybe the first name and last name, or first name and last name and a, and a date of the procedure, or, or possibly if you're using uh, some type of, a, of an ID number for each patient. But do something to rename the folder, not the file within the folder. Um, if you do that, that will keep your uh, record keeping uh, simplified. Um, once you've copied and pasted the folder and renamed it, go back to your flash drive, delete the VetSpecs folder uh, off of the flash drive, and when you plug the flash drive into your surgical monitor for the next procedure, it will create a whole new folder each time. The reason we, that we are recommending that, after again working with the software, is that the PM100, if the VetSpecs folder has not been removed, it will go back into that same folder, it will create a new file within that folder, and obviously if you think about it, uh, you can begin to have a, a number of surgical procedures that populate within one folder, and it can begin to get a little bit confusing on which procedure is which, or which surgery was which within one folder. So doing what I prescribed earlier will keep your record keeping simple. Uh, it allows you to not uh, get confused, and the monitor will create a new folder each and every time named Vet Specs. And that is pretty much it. Uh, that concludes the data saving aspect of the monitor, and uh, we will certainly be back in touch on the VetSpecs PM100 and VetSpecs in general uh, as we maybe move on to some of their other products uh, and some of the other modules that are available for this system.